We want to welcome everyone to our second service here at Friendship Baptist Church. It's a blessing to have you here uh, with us this morning as we come together and worship our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so thank you for being a part of our time together today. Something that I want to just let you know about uh, that will happen a little bit later on in our service. You see a couple of boxes uh, that are here and uh, on our altar table this morning. It is our fifth Sunday, and on the fifth Sunday, we always take up a love offering for benevolence. It gives us an opportunity to help those uh, within our church or our community that need help. And so this is something that this church has done for years. And so if you're here this morning uh, at a time of our service, we're going to ask you just to, during a song, you'll be, you'll be standing up and you'll just ease down and make an, uh, uh, just a love offering gift here to that. And again, it all goes to benevolence within our community and folks that need help. And so we just want to be able to give you that opportunity to participate in that this morning uh, as well. So again, thank you for coming and being part of our time together today. Uh, we've got a lot of things that are happening, a lot of things that are taking place within our church and church family. We want to remind you, if you're here with kids or grandkids or anything of that nature, we've got our children's program that's coming up in a couple of weeks, our children's weekend that's coming up in a couple of weeks, and we want to invite you to participate in that. Uh, if you need to know a little bit more about what's happening, need to know a little bit more about what's taking place, please uh, catch up with myself or the other staff or call the church in the morning, whatever you need to do. Uh, make sure we get you signed up, get those kids signed up. We're going to have a great, great weekend uh, for our children out in our church and in our community as well. And so uh, it's just a blessing to be here with you this morning. Uh, we've got something special that's about to happen in the life of our church and also in the life of a family within our church. So I'm going to voice a prayer, and then you will just be able to pay attention and see what happens uh, here behind me in just a moment. Pray with me for just a moment. Father, thank you so much. For this, our time together, Father, we are blessed truly beyond measure, Father, in all the ways that you touch our hearts, Father, all the ways that you touch our lives. Father, we ask and pray this morning that you will continue to bless each and every one of us, Father. Draw us closer to you in everything that we do, Father, in every situation, Father, we pray for your honor and glory. Father, the blessings of Christ be upon each and every one of us today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. It is good to be with you this morning. Uh, we, this is a very special day, not only in the life of our church family, but for my family personally. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Garrett uh, made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as his Savior. And I get the opportunity to baptize him this morning. Uh, this is something my family and I have prayed about for several uh, years now. And we know that uh, each child uh, comes to know Christ in their own way, at their own time, and this was a decision that uh, we are thankful for, but one that we did not rush Garrett into, and we are thankful for that, that he made this decision on his own, in his own time. Um, so uh, this past week, uh, one of my uh, daily Bible readings was from 3 John uh, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, and it says, For I was very glad when fellow believers came and testified uh, to your fidelity to the truth, how you are walking in truth. I have no greater joy than this, to hear, them, to hear that my children are walking in truth. And today I am thankful for that. That not only my child is walking in truth, but the students that I work with are walking in truth as well. I am so thankful to be able to, uh, years from now, to have testimonies given of their faith. So Gary, I'm going to ask you, today do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and publicly profess Him as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. All right. Garrett, today I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
good to see all of you this morning. We know why we've gathered in this room. And that's to worship together. We're going to invite you to sing with us. We're going to invite you to stand. We're going to begin with more precious than silver. If you'll join us. Continue with Come Thou Almighty King. Join us as we sing.
Sometimes when we, when we enter a worship service, we are distracted by the surroundings or by our neighbor. Just the idea of I'm sitting in a group of people, so I have to do this and I have to sound like this. I'm going to encourage you during this next hymn, first of all, if it's, a, if it's new to you, join us when you can. The rest of you that know this one, I'm going to say, concentrate on just you and the Lord. Don't worry about your neighbor. You sing. You're singing for him. You're not singing for us. So if you needed permission, you've just been given it. We're going to sing. You can remain seated. We're going to sing Holy Spirit, living breath of God. Let the word speak to you, and you pray these words as you sing. Brother Tim mentioned earlier that today is the day we collect a benevolence offering. Uh, we would just remind you that this is also an opportunity to worship. That scripture calls us to take care of widows, orphans, those in need. So if you're prepared to do so, we're going to invite you to come and leave your offering in one of the boxes here as we sing this chorus, Holy, Holy. So if you'll stand and join us, please. <clears throat> holy, 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 
It is a blessing, of course, to see everybody here with us today. And, of course, if you're visiting with us as well, we are glad to have you here at Friendship Baptist Church. I know part of Alan's family, Garrett's family, is here with us today, but others that may be visiting with us today as well. What is a blessing uh, to have you here with us in the house of the Lord today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for just a moment. Father, thank you so much for our day. Thank you so much for our time together Father, we are blessed beyond measure of all the ways that you continue to just touch our hearts and move within our lives. And Father, we pray that today you will continue to bless as, as only you can, Father, thanking you for all the things that you do in our hearts and lives. Father, draw us closer to you in everything that we do, Father, that today may be a day of celebration, a day of glory, a, a day of wonder and blessing, Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thank you. And in Christ's name we pray, amen. Guys, guess what? We're going to continue our journey this morning. We've uh, kind of been talking together and looking at, a, at uh, not at every aspect, every chapter of the book of Joshua, but quite a few. And we continue that journey with Joshua together this morning. It's, it's kind of a, ne a neat thing because, you know, last week things didn't turn out so well. Uh, last week, things were difficult for the Israelites. They had found themselves in a, in a pretty bad situation. They found themselves actually just not being obedient to God, not doing what the Lord had, had, had wanted them to do and not doing the things the way God wanted them to do. And so tonight, or excuse me, this morning in Joshua chapter 8, okay, Joshua chapter 8, we find ourselves... And we find the Israelites trying to make up for lost ground. And that's our thought this morning, trying to reclaim lost ground. You know, think about that for a moment. It's real easy in the world we live in today to just quit. We see it happen all the time. Individuals go through life, individual situations happen, things get hard, and, and instead of just kind of buckling down and getting, getting through the situation. Some people just say, I've had enough. I'm just going to quit. I'm going to stop right here where I am. 
You see it happen in sports a lot of times. A certain team may get way behind and it's toward the end of the game and instead of really fighting all the way through, they just decide to quit that last part of the game. And, you know, it happens so many times in life. It happens so many times in sports. It happens so many times in our Christian life. And let me tell you something, folks. It happened in the life of the Israelites as well. There's an old adage and as I found this, I thought to myself, it's an old adage because I don't know that I've ever heard it before. So those of you who are here and older than me today, maybe you've heard of this one before, but I'd never heard of this before, but I thought it was pretty neat and definitely relates to what we have here this morning. The adage says that there are three men who deserve no pity. Three men who deserve no pity. The unsecured creditor the hen-picked husband, and the man who will not try again. I want to share something with you this morning. I think one of the most admirable qualities that you and I can have as a child of God is the quality of trying again. Every single one of us that needs to be our attitude. I'm going to try again. Every single one of us, over and over again, we continue to make a mistake. We continue to have sin in our life. And when that happens, what do we do? How do we handle that? How do we deal with that situation? We either, either stop and quit and lay down, or we try again. We decide that we're going to take that next step. We decide that we're not going to, to give up. And as we try our best to, to live for Christ and to live for God in our hearts, we need to understand it doesn't matter that we fail. How we live for God is not dependent upon our strength. It is dependent upon our faith in God. You see, God's strength will never fail. God's ability in our hearts and lives will never fail. You and I will always have the opportunity, always have the availability to continue on, to strive for better, to do more than we've ever dreamed, not based on who we are, but based on who God is through us. So we're gaining some lost ground. What does that mean? What do I want to share with you this morning? Well, again, chapter 7 has just happened. That was last week. And we saw in chapter 7 what should have been a, a real simple victory for the Israelite nation turned out to be a whooping. Turned out that men lost their life. Turned out that all of that happened because they disobeyed God. Not necessarily the whole nation, but some, of course, and especially one individual who stole, took away, and didn't do what God said. And so in the midst of that, we find ourselves in chapter 8. We find ourselves with Israel and Joshua in a situation of what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to start over? How are we supposed to regain this lost ground in our life? Think about it for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. How do you, when you make a mistake, when you have sin in your life, when you've, when you've fallen as a child of God, how do you start over? How do you think to yourself, okay, I'm drawing the, the line in the sand, and from this moment forward, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. From this moment forward, I'm going to try to live my life and be the very best child of God I can be. How do you do that? That's where we're going to go this morning. That's what Israel had to do here. And so just like all the other times, I'm not going to read all of chapter 8 to you. I do think you ought to go back and read it. It's a great, great chapter, a lot of good stuff there. But I want to share a few verses with you this morning and point out a few of the principles that I think you and I may have in our hearts and have in our lives as we need to try to regain some lost ground. The first one is this, Joshua chapter 8, verse 1. 
It says, The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid or discouraged. Take all the troops with you and go attack Ai. Look, I have handed over to you the king of Ai, his people, city, and land. Here it is, plain and simple, ladies and gentlemen. How do we regain lost ground? Number one, we follow God's plan. Plain and simple, we follow God's plan. Step back in the last week for just a moment. How did the Israelites get where they were now? They did not follow God's plan. I mean, that was it. What were they supposed to do? They were supposed to take the whole army. The spies said, nope, let's don't take everybody. Let's just take a few thousand. They took a few thousand. They got beat. They didn't follow God's plan. So ladies and gentlemen, when you and I fail, when you and I make mistakes, when we sin in our life, we're all going to do it. Basically what we do when that happens is we don't follow God's plan for our life. Understand this as well this morning. Every single person here, God has a plan for your life. There is something God is wanting to do in and through your life. He has a plan for you. If you are a child of God, man, He has the ultimate plan for you. Are you here this morning and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior? He still has a plan for you. It just starts at the moment of salvation in your life. And it can't start before then. But it can start when that happens. God has a plan for your life. He had a plan for Israel. And here in chapter 8, verse 1, basically when everything is said and done, when all the things have happened, I mean, can you imagine? Man, the Israelites were scared. The, the, the army was scared. Here they were. They had gone through Jericho. Everything had happened. Everything had been great. They hadn't lost a battle. All of a sudden they go to this little bitty town, to this place where everything should have been easy peasy, and it didn't work out that way. Everything should have been easy. I mean, it should have been a simple victory, but it didn't work out that way. They didn't follow God's plan. Man, I'm sure the soldiers were scared to death. What are we going to do now? You know, here's Joshua saying, we're fixing to go get them again. Wait a minute, I don't want to get back into that same situation. Yes, we do. You see, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we don't want to jump back into the same situation, but it's not the same situation. All we're doing the second go-round is following God's plan. It's doing what God has called us to do, led us to do. And that's what Joshua is leading the people here to do. Man, I'm sure they were nervous. I'm sure they were scared. You know, 36 men had been killed the first go-round. They hadn't lost anybody. 36 men had been killed. Can you imagine what those soldiers thought? Can you imagine what those wives and mothers, mothers of those soldiers thought as they got ready to march on this same city again? But something was going to be different. Because this time, they were going to follow God's plan. You see, ladies and gentlemen, in our hearts and in our lives, how many times do we mess up? How many times do we get in a situation and it fall apart? And it happens because we do things our way and we want to go out and do, you know, do our own little thing and we don't follow God's will we don't follow God's plan and, and we fall flat on our face and we kind of wonder why we know why we know why those things happen we can make a difference you and I can change you and I can follow God's plan in our heart follow God's plan in our life if we just desire to it takes us being willing to. It takes us understanding what's happening, understanding what's taking place. But we can follow God's plan. Now, I read to you verse 1. I want you to understand, looking at the rest of those next verses, it is an awesome plan of God. I mean, it goes in detail. This is what I want you to do. Attack and pre-attack and run away and ambush. I mean, it is an awesome part. So again, if you haven't read chapter 8, go back and read chapter 8, okay? You can do it after I get through preaching, but you can go back and read chapter 8. It's awesome plan. And you think to yourself, man, if you read it, you think, that's a good plan. Well, guess what? God has a good plan for your life. Not only do we need to follow God's plan, we can rejoice in God's provision. 
By that I mean this, folks. God has a good plan for your life. God has provided for you in such a way. He's provided for the world in such a way through His Son, Jesus Christ. As He died on the cross for our sins, as He died on the cross to make a way so that you and I could have eternity in heaven with, with Christ, man, what an awesome provision God has made for us. We ought to rejoice in that. Be excited about the fact that God loves us so much. That He plans out every detail. And if we'll just follow His plan, I'm not going to tell you, okay? I, I'm not going to tell you that life will be perfect. I'm not going to tell you that there's not going to be difficulty. There's not going to be moments of difficulty and times of, of struggle. I mean, we all have that. We don't always follow God's plan. But I want you to know God's plan for your life is to bless you. God's plan is for your, for your life is for you to, to grow in your relationship with Him, grow and be more and more and more of what God would have you to be in your heart and in your life and just rejoice in God's provision of everything that's happening in your life, everything that's taking place in your life. You see what happens as you read that verse, that chapter 8. They did exactly what God wanted them to do. You know what happened to the city of Ai? It was completely destroyed. You, sh you see, what, ha what should have happened the first go-round happened the second go-round. Now, it didn't happen the first go-round because they didn't follow God's plan. It happened the second go-round because they kind of said, well, wait a minute, <laughs> we messed up. God, forgive us. we got to follow your plan. We follow God's plan, and exactly what God wants to happen happens. Rejoice in God's provision for your life, ladies and gentlemen. There are some difficult times, but all the things that happen in this world, all the things that happen on this earth are but temporary all the struggles that we face in this world are but temporary. Eternity is forever. Eternity is more than you and I can even imagine. And what God is preparing us for as we go through life here on this earth is not necessarily that this will be an abundant life and we'll have all the blessings here on earth and we won't have any difficulties here on earth, but He's blessing us and moving us and pushing us and growing us so that we can share the gospel so that when we leave this earth, we'll spend eternity in glory with Him. His provision for each and every one of us is beyond measure. So we follow God's plan. We rejoice in God's provision. Follow His plan. It'll be okay. Look down now for me. We, and we've, we've skipped the plan part. That's why I want you to go back and, and read chapter 8. But, but look down to find verse 30. 30 and 31 for just a moment. This was after the plan had been completed. After the city of Ai had fallen. You know, just what God said would happen, was going to happen, it all happened. They followed His plan. Everything worked out just right. Verses 30 and 31, At that time Joshua built an altar on Mount Ebal to the Lord, the God of Israel, just as Moses, the Lord's servant, had commanded the Israelites. He built it according to what is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones on which no iron tool has been used. Then they offered burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed fellowship offerings on it. What was next? What was next in getting their life right with God? And trying to make sure that all these situations, all these this lost ground, that they could regain all of that. Well, they followed God's plan, and they rejoiced in God's provision, for provision, excuse me. But then here, they remembered to do something. They remembered to give thanks. Now, I want to stop here for a moment, because sadly... Here's what happens a lot of times when you and I receive a blessing from God, maybe even a life-changing blessing from God. 
And has, here's, here's how, how we give thanks. Thank you, Lord. Do you see it? I mean, how many times have things happened in your life and, and ultimately the way you give thanks was just basically to say, thank you, God, I appreciate it. Is that enough? Does it seem like that's enough? Does it seem like there ought to be something else, something more, as we remember to, to, to give thanks? Here, the Bible tells us for Joshua, man, it was not just about saying thank you. We like to say those words. We like to hear those words. I mean, get, you know, our, our grandboys were at the house you know, yesterday and, you know, some give something back and forth. And, you know, now what do you say? You know, trying to make them learn. Thank you. That's great. Think about this for a little moment, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. As our Lord and Savior, we know Him. We have a, a relationship with Him. We can spend eternity with Him. Is saying, thank you, enough? Or should there not be something else, something more? A way to remember, to give thanks. See, we see that Joshua, he said he built an altar. He made a monument. Well, we hear an awful lot about monuments today, don't we? I tell you what, I ain't worried about earthly monuments. But you and I need to have some spiritual monuments in our hearts. We need to have some spiritual monuments in our lives. There needs to be moments in time that we remember, that we remember to give thanks for, not just a one-time thing, but we remember to give thanks for all the time. You see, when, when, when Joshua and him built this altar, they built the altar, they sacrificed the animals, they did all of those things. I mean, it was a big deal, folks. It was way more than just saying thank you. But here's something about the altar that they built. When they got through using it, they didn't tear it down. It remained. And I can only imagine that, that somewhere down, you know, in, in the distant past, the distant future from that, I guess you would say, you know, somebody else down the road a few years later, they walked by, they saw that monument there. They saw that, that, that those stones put together there, that altar put together there. And they looked at it and they thought and they remembered, oh man, I remember what happened here. Man, this is when we as a nation, we just, God had just blessed us. Man, we'd followed God's plan and, and AI had failed. We made this, this altar. We sacrificed to God. They, they remembered that. They continued to think about that. They continued to praise God for that. Man, just to remember to give thanks. Every single one of us here this morning, you and I are blessed beyond measure. How thankful are we? I tell you what, folks, if you've ever been anywhere outside of the United States, we got our issues now, I understand. But if you've ever been anywhere outside of the, the United States, you and I, we ought to be thankful just that God blessed us enough and we were born where we were born. There are people born in other parts of the world who never get to hear about Jesus. There are people born in other parts of the world who, who, who what we throw away from our dinner table would feed their family for a week. There's things happening around the world that you and I cannot imagine unless we've been able to see that with our own eyes. We are blessed beyond measure in so many ways, physically, spiritually, mentally, all kinds of ways. And folks, we need to remember to give thanks for all that God has done. And man, these folks here, hey, they had messed up. Chapter 7, man, they messed up big time. It cost people their life. And in the moment, because this wasn't the last time, chapter 7, it wasn't the last time they made a mistake, okay, folks? But they learned from that lesson in the moment and here in chapter 8, they weren't going to do the same thing again. They gave thanks. They remembered to give thanks in such a way that, that overwhelmed everything. And you'll think, well, Brother Tim, I can, I can give thanks. I can be thankful. I am thankful. 
for, for all the things God's done in my life. That's great and that's wonderful and we need to be. But I want you to understand something. That the way we show our thanks is the last little thought I want to share with you this morning. The way we show our thanks is in how we renew our commitment. Joshua chapter 8, look down at verse 32 through 35. Three verses there. It says, There on the stones Joshua copied the law of Moses, which, had written, which he had written in the presence of the Israelites. All Israel, resident, alien, and citizen alike, meaning everybody that was with them, every single person in the Israelite nation, whether they were visiting or whatever the case, they were there. With their elders, officers, judges stood on either side of the Ark of the Lord's Covenant facing the Levitical priest who carried it. Half of them were in front of Mount Gershom, the other half in front of Mount Ebal and Mos as Moses, the Lord's servant, had commanded earlier concerning blessing the people of Israel. Afterward, Joshua read aloud all the words of the law, the blessings as well as the curses, according to all that was written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read before the entire assembly of Israel, including the women, the dependents, the risen aliens who lived among them. Do y'all get what just happened? I promise you this, it was not an hour-long worship service. They read the law. What is the law? What books make up the law? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The first five books of the Old Testament. That is the law. Okay? <laughs> you know, they had a revival service that lasted quite some time. Because what happened is Joshua got out the word of the Word of God, the law of that time, the things that Moses had written, and he read it to the, all the people. Now, I'm going to start right now, and I'm going to start with Genesis 1-1 and read, and when I get through, y'all can go home. Sometime before midnight, more than likely. Right? You're definitely not going to meet the, uh, beat the Methodist to the uh, restaurant this afternoon, okay? It's going to go. It's not going to happen. You see, the biggest thing that happened in the midst of all of this was that the people of Israel, that Joshua, the people of Israel, renewed their commitment to God. Their behavior was a symbol of their renewed commitment. I mean, think about it for a moment. These folks had been wandering around for 40 years before they went into the promised land, right? A whole new generation had risen up. Okay? Not the folks who left Egypt, but a whole new generation had risen up. Some of them maybe heard and knew bits and pieces, but, but I wonder to myself on this day that Joshua read the law, if that was the first time that some of those folks had ever heard every single word of the law. Every single word about what God had done in their lives. Every single word about God, how God had brought them out of Egypt. Every single word up until this moment in time of what was happening to them. It changed their life. It renewed their commitment to God. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you something this morning. You and I have an opportunity today to renew our commitment to Christ. What is the most important commitment you've ever made? Well, I'll go ahead and tell you what mine is. And my wife is sitting right back there. And I'll tell you in front of her. Because she would say the same thing. The most important commitment I've ever made is to ask Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of my life. My commitment to her is next. My commitment to you is next. But God is first. And ladies and gentlemen, He has to be first in our hearts. 
He has to be first in our lives. And if you and I in our hearts, if you and I in our lives are going to begin to regain some lost spiritual ground in our lives, it must happen by you and I renewing our commitment to Him. It's got to happen. So where do you stand? Are you where you need to be with Christ today? Maybe you are. As a Christian, are you where you need to be with Christ today? Maybe you are. But guess what? I've not always been where I'm supposed to be. Israelite, I mean, they, they, they were God's people. They weren't where they were supposed to be. It happens, ladies and gentlemen. You and I can, can lose that relationship in a sense. We can lose that closeness. We don't lose our relationship. You don't lose your salvation, okay? We can lose that a closeness of that relationship because of sin in our life, because we didn't follow God's plan. And so maybe today, maybe this morning, what you need to do more than anything else is to renew your commitment to Christ. Yeah, the altar is going to be open. And you can do that at this altar. You can do that where you're sitting right now. I'm not worried about numbers. Okay? Nothing, that doesn't impress me at all. Because you see, what didn't impress God, what did impress God, I'll say it this way, was not the fact that they worshipped Him, but the fact that their hearts changed to Him. And that's what matters. And you can come to church all you like. You can be here every time the door's open. But if your heart's not right with Jesus, you're in trouble. You've got to make sure that's right. That's the commitment that you need to renew. That's the thing in your heart and life that you need to make sure that is exactly where it's supposed to be. And so this morning, whether you're a believer or Maybe even this morning you're here and you realize that what you need to do more than anything else is just to give your life to Christ. You need to make a, a commitment to Him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. You, you know, you haven't been following God's plan because you haven't been following God. Whatever you need to do, whatever the Holy Spirit impresses upon you right now, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the most important thing. To renew your commitment. To be what God would have you to be. For all of us, that is my prayer. Let's pray. Father, as we come together, as we close this time, this invitation, I ask and pray, Father, for your will to be done in every heart, every life that is here, O oh Lord. Lead and guide us, Father, to be and do exactly what you would want us to do. Father, if there's anyone who needs to come to this altar and pray, Father, anyone that needs to pray with me this morning, whatever it is, whatever decisions need to be made, Father, may we just renew our commitment to you to be everything you would have us to be, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to invite you to stand. I have decided to follow Jesus is our hymn of invitation this morning. As we stand together, as we sing together, if you need to come, I invite you to come.